Hello and welcome back to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. Today I'm going to be sharing this uh, favourite video of mine, painting these beautiful silhouetted boats using a photograph that I found on Pixabay that I found very inspiring. I shall try to remember to put a link in the description below for the photo reference and for the materials that I've used. But I hope you enjoy watching this one as much as I enjoyed painting it. So let's get into the demo. Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting a simplified version of this beautiful photograph that I found on Pixabay um, to try and sort of show basically how I would paint the reflections. Um, this is just a short, shortened version of the painting. There's a full three-part tutorial on Patreon which includes a detailed tutorial on putting together the pencil sketch to start with, with the foreshortened shape of the, of the boat and a downloadable or um, copyable um, line sketch for you there. So please follow the link below if that's something you'd be interested in. So I'm, I've started off by sketching out a simplified version with a horizon line, the distant buildings, a few masts showing boats moored up in the harbour and my main boat. Um, I'm using Saunders Waterford cold pressed 100% cotton paper. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorator's masking tape and my board's at my usual angle of about 45 degrees, which helps the paint to flow. I'm using a limited palette of two colours for this painting. Um, first, vermilion, which is this beautiful, rich, orangey red colour. And secondly, I shall use indigo. And the first thing to do is to wet the paper all over and then using horizontal brush strokes with my large Pro Art Ron Ranson Harky brush, I'm going to paint a graduated wash that goes from indigo through to vermilion and then through to a mixture of indigo and vermilion across for the foreground water. I'm using these horizontal sweeps of the brush and here I'm using a small harky brush too. So I'm keeping my large harky brush for the vermilion and the smaller brush for indigo and just gradually working and blending them across. You can of course um, use a water spray on this and tip and tilt your board, um, which I do a little bit later, but it's not shown here, to get a really, really smooth glassy finish to this graduated wash. But the thing to do at this stage is just to keep working with horizontal brush strokes, um, just blending in this, this wash. It doesn't matter if it seems a little bit streaky at times because it's all wet and the beauty of watercolour working wet in wet is that you get these subtle diffusions as the paint um, like gently blends together and you can help this by keeping your brush strokes horizontal. And once it gets to the kind of look that I like, um, I shall then clean up um, with a piece of kitchen roll, clean up the tape around the edges of any water or paint so that it doesn't run back into my painting. And then I'll lay my board flat and let it dry flat. And then the wash won't run anymore. It should dry like that, but slightly lighter. And at this point, it's really important not to touch the wash to make any sort of marks on it or flaws. Just leave it to dry completely. And then we can come back once it's totally dry and um, do a bit more work on the painting. So it's completely dry and the washes have given me these lovely soft sunset effect and of the reflection of the sunset on the water. So now I want to get in my horizon line. I'm going to use some masking tape um, and I'm going to stick it across underneath my horizon line so I can get a nice flat um, horizon. Now please, if you're going to do this, check your paper first 
the paper you're going to use with masking tape um, just in case sometimes masking tape will tear cheaper types of paper so test the paper that you're going to use to make sure it's not going to tear and make sure the paint's completely dry when you do this I'm mixing up a mixture of my two colors indigo and vermilion um, making sure I get a really nice almost a black color but it's actually a really dark aubergine I'm using my three quarter inch flat brush for this. The flat brush is really useful for blocking in cityscape skylines. So I'm just following my pencil outline. Use whichever size flat brush will suit the size of paper that you use. I'm using a quarter imperial sheet, which is 11 inches by 15 inches or 28 centimeters by 38 centimeters. So I find that the three quarter inch flat brush is really good for putting in that horizon line. Once it's just about dry, carefully peel off the masking tape and I've got a nice line there. It's kind of bled down a little bit by the tape on the left side, but I can just, with a flat brush, bring that building down because this building actually is slightly closer. It's in the mid ground. Um, so I can just uh, go over that slight slight bit there and then using the tips of the flat brush bring down some sort of vert uh, horizontal lines for reflection marks so the next thing i'm going to do is build up my the rest of my distant reflections um, across the horizon line Again, I'm using my flat brush and just the tips of the flat brush. I'm making sure that I leave a nice thin line between the buildings and the reflection all the way along for a sort of water line. And that should help me to create the effect that I'm looking for and differentiate between the buildings themselves and the reflections. This is just one way of painting reflections it's the kind of way that i'm using um, that i think is going to work the best for this sort of silhouette type painting but there are as many ways of painting reflections as there are artists really um, and most artists have several different methods that they use for creating different types of atmospheres or effects but i think if you can Work carefully with your flat brush, just painting down um, sort of the mirrored shape in a way, but in a sort of a ripple effect of the buildings or whatever you're reflecting, um, then you can produce quite an effective um, and simply done reflection. It just takes a little while to very slowly work across your scene and making sure that you've got the right consistency of paint on the tips of your brushes. If you load your brush up with too much paint, you could get big splodges. Um, so once you load your paint brush up with paint, just try it out on your palette to make sure, or on a scrap piece of paper to make sure that it's just giving you these very fine lines from the tip that you can then slowly work across your horizon line until you've got a reasonably convincing loose impression of a reflection. And then as you approach the foreground water, you can extend your sweeping flat brush marks across the front of the water uh, to give you this lovely ripple effect. And we can go in and add a few more darks maybe and some slightly oranger marks or redder marks a bit later on, but I think that will do for now. The next thing is to work on the focal point, which is the yacht. So mixing up again a nice rich inky consistency of the vermilion and the indigo i'm mixing up plenty of paint because this is quite a large shape to paint and i'm using the three quarter inch flat brush because i can use the synthetic hairs bend them around and paint around the shape of the hull nice and cleanly and i can also use the shape of the flat brush to then cut across the top and to paint around leaving a small sort of area above the boat for the cabin windows 
and leave that so it's just the sun, sunset colour showing through. And then to keep working on the shape of the boat, after all, it is just a shape. It's foreshortened, it's quite a complicated angle. But if you look at the photograph at the beginning, um, it's literally just a shape. So if you can bear that in mind and imitate the shape in the photograph, then you should get the yacht looking foreshortened correctly just by painting this blocked in shape. And then if you mirror the shape using the flat brush and the side to side horizontal sweeps to create a reflection below the hull. And then there's just a few final details and this is why it's important to get the drawing right or the sketch right uh, before you start because you're just going to simply follow the lines with the tips of the flat brush to paint in these masts. So make sure they're nice and straight before you start because if these masts aren't straight then it will really notice. I like to use the flat brush and gradually work up the page to keep my lines straight. But if you're confident at working with a round brush or a calligraphy brush and just painting a single stroke, um, maybe turning your board around so that you are painting in a more natural way for your arm to paint a sort of straight line, then, then do it that way. But I find that I can control the flat brush and keep the shape nice nice and accurate, but still it looks fairly loose. Now next I want to reflect those masts. So using my small calligraphy brush and wiggly lines following the angle of the angled mast and then straight for the straight mast, bringing them down over the tape and then going back in with darker paint to darken up the shadows and reflections of the hull and blend them into the reflections of the mass. I'm still being careful to not block in those reflections completely to still keep some variation in tone and hue to indicate where the water is just moving and giving us this sort of rippled reflection. Now for some of the finishing details. So this sort of little cross beam between the wires for the sail and the masts and then using the tips of the flat brush just to put in the masts um, in the distance against the harbour wall there. Something and nothing. Just a few indications of them there and then there'll be a few masts over the other side. I shall put in the reflections for those a bit later once everything's dry. So just a few details to go. Um, firstly, I'm going to reflect the masts just with a few dots, um, just drawn down vertically below where the masts are there. I'm being guided by my photograph, keeping them nice and small and nice and faint. And I'll do the same for all of my masts all the way along. Now just working in with the flat brush and my sort of aubergine, but with a slightly red cast into my reflections and just pulling a slightly warmer colour through and across the front. 
Now I'm going to put in my rigging and for this I'm going to cheat slightly. I'm going to use a fine liner. You can use a rigger and paint if you're brave enough, but I'm just going to show you how easy it is to add rigging effectively um, with a fine liner. If you're working in, in darks like this, then it won't notice, but it's a lot easier to put the rigging in to follow the lines that you put in with pencil or to copy um, if you didn't put them in with a pencil to copy um, the way the wires and rigging goes in the photograph. So I've removed the tape and here's the finished painting. Well, I hope you like that. And if you want to see a full tutorial in three parts, um, then follow the link to my Patreon group. Um, I really enjoyed painting this. I think it was an interesting exercise in producing very simple reflections um, that, but that work very effectively on this still water. If you haven't seen this one before, I hope you found it useful. Um, I really enjoyed watching it back and it reminded me how much I love painting this kind of scene. So I think I'll be planning a few more of this kind of thing this year. Well, thank you so much. Um, please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to everyone that supports the channel on Patreon. We really do appreciate you. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, then please follow either of the links below. Many thanks and have a great week.